just turned it down. Somewhere. Hey, you guys are back for another incredible episode with another incredible guest, Erica Sumner. Thank you so much for jumping on with us. Good morning. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you've had some super rapid success and, you know, I, I find this best. Let's let everybody know exactly who you are, how we got here today. And so what's your story? You know, where, where, where'd you come from? Where, where are you going? Yeah. Right. Um, so um, I'm a military daughter. Um, and so uh, we've, we moved around quite a bit growing up and my dad retired out of Florida. So um background i'm not necessarily a native floridian but i have been here for you know 30 years 30 plus years um I, you know before real estate i was in banking i was a branch manager for both sun trust bank and bank of america and prior to that i was in management for Publix, which a lot of people don't know that was my first job at 14 making you know two dollars and 75 cents an hour bagging at Publix, but it was uh probably the company that laid the foundation for uh, the customer service piece that I'm really very passionate about. I so that. I uh, was very, very young in management at Publix and I had uh, my daughter young and it just, the work-life balance wasn't there. So I had to make a really difficult decision and um, left that company, which I loved very, very much. Left that company and went into banking and um, started off as a teller and worked my way up into branch management. Uh, worked with some amazing people. But the key to that was, as I already worked in an industry where um, I knew a lot of people and I had some trusted relationships. I mean, what's more sacred than, you know, knowing that girl knows who overdrafts their account all the time, but, you know, um, that kind of thing. So I had some really good relationships from customers and and fabulous relationships with employees and, and upper management Um at SunTrust and then um, was given a, a probably the most blessed opportunity of my life to leave banking um, and go into real estate. And <clears throat> that doesn't just happen with one person. Um, my husband supported me financially, emotionally. Um, my uh, mom welcomed me with open arms into her brokerage um, and, you know, took me under her wing and, and taught me. And, you um, you know, I, I love the premise of this. It wasn't so much for me, like, okay, what, what did I do? Like I thought, okay, what, what did I wish that I had done to make getting to where I am easier? So, yeah, yeah. but that's it. You know, I'm a mom, my daughter's 20 years old. She's at Florida state. Um, my husband owns a construction company locally and, um, you know, we're just, just happy people. And crushing it, right? And crushing it. I mean, it, it's kind of sad that she went to FSU. I mean, that's a really sad part of the story, I but. I know. <laughs> I almost left that out, but I didn't because I love her. <laughs> I know she's watching, so. <laughs> Absolutely. You got to bust some chops. Yeah. Um, you said something in there that, like, it's kind of ironic. We were just talking about this the other day, and it, and it came up with our team or in a leadership conversation. We were talking about, like, do you want to have a product that's Walmart or do you want to have a product that's Publix? And I, I think it's, so what were some of the key takeaways you had from leaving Publix? Like what, what do you think was ingrained in your fundamentals? Mm. Cause oh, I think that's, that's a great company. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a fabulous question. I mean, uh, from the, from like the ground up, they've got a don't pass it up, pick it up rule. Like, yeah, you're not the janitor. You're not responsible for sweeping the floor, but if you walk by and there's trash on the floor, we're going to pick it up because it is, you know, the whole philosophy, clean, happy, you know, pleasurable uh, shopping experience, everyone is responsible for it. So, um, you know, I, oh God, I just, I loved that company. I still love that company, unless I'm a diehard public shopper, but um, they gave me opportunities that, uh, financial opportunities. When I left there, I was, you know, 21, 22 years old, maybe a little bit older, making $80,000 a year, stock options, bonuses. I mean, um, and, and a huge career ahead of me, but it was every Saturday and every Sunday and 50, 60 hours a week. And you have to, you've got to make some, some decisions, you know, in life where the money isn't necessarily the, the most important thing. Family, family is. So, um, yeah, that. but 
the, you know, you walk in there and the public's promise, if you're making uh, lasagna and the meat is bad, they're going to give you your money back for the meat, the noodles, the sauce, the pan you cooked it in, they're going to make you happy. And I think that is um, definitely the standard that, I, that was ingrained, like, do what you have to do, do what makes it right, um, do what makes it the best experience, you know, um, and, and don't be afraid if you make a mistake to say, listen, I made a mistake, but this is what we're going to do to fix it. Or instead of that, this is my favorite thing. When you make a mistake, what can I do to make it right? You know, yeah. because let them tell you. Um, and that really honestly goes through our day to day lives in real estate and banking at public. So, um, yeah, I mean, and you can see the kids that work at Publix, the kids that work at Chick-fil-A, like their manners, their, their politeness, everything just is, is on a whole nother level. And, um, it, without it, I mean, you know, I'm sure I'd have been okay, but it was, um, it was the best first job I could have ever had, honestly. That's awesome. And I think there's so many nuggets in what you just said that really need to translate into, I mean, real estate's one thing, but it's in life, right? Like yeah. that's, you know, the pick it up rule is something that I feel like personal responsibility is how we make the earth a little better and how we make lives a little better and yep. how you can help people. So I love that so much. And yeah, man, let's dive in. So you can talk to a new agent, you can talk to yourself. And okay. if, if you had to start over tomorrow, what would you do to get from zero to a hundred thousand as fast as possible? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I did make some notes to make sure that I was, um, in line because these are all building blocks, right? It, I love how you said you got there so fast, but it, oh God, it didn't feel so fast. Like, you know, it felt like um, years and years and years. In fact, like I'm sitting far enough away, the grays, divinity med spa, fixing these, you know? Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Right. So um, like the industry itself and the, and the, and the stress and the pressure that we put on ourselves to be either the best that we can be or be the best for our customer is, I mean, this is not an easy it's not an easy business to be in, but it's it's one of the most amazing, gratifying, um, coolest industries to to be in. So, yeah. OK, so I kind of wrote this to myself, like if I were if I were going to start over, um, I happened to I did take my own advice. I picked a one amazing brokerage to start with. Um, I, everyone kind of knows I was with Century 21 Alliance Realty to start and I spent many years there and I loved them. I loved it. I love what um, the corporate back to that um, stands for. I love how they are a family, how they love their customers. Um, they love their agents. Um, so I think I picked a, a really great spot to, to start with. And um, for a couple of reasons, because the management and brokerage team there um, are the, I, I can't think of any bigger champions for real estate and for, um, private ownership, property ownership rights, our community, our association, like, um, it was, it also ingrained in me what, you know, this isn't more than just, Hey, let's go to a closing, sell this house. It's a lot more than that. So, um, so pick the right brokerage for you interview them, um, find out what's important to you. And then, you know, don't be afraid to go to more than one or two. And, I, I, you know, I'm the first to say, I'm not going to be the right brokerage or broker for a new agent. I'm not, I work, I'm a working broker. Um, I have, um, a huge client customer base and, um, you know, I would love, like you said earlier, I'd love to pour that into everybody, but I, yep. you know, you, you have to transition. And, and I think some of the best brokerage brokers, brokerages are just that um, they are just there in a supporting role. I love to support my team and help my team grow, but that's why we're small is because I mean, can't sit there for hours. So coming in new pick, pick the right broker brokerage and broker um, or team, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, something that, I didn't do right off in the beginning and that I should have was get to know the association better. Um, the people at the association, what the association does, how it can contribute to your career, what it does in our community, um, just uh, to, 
to familiarize yourself with, I mean, they're, they're there for you and we pay the dues. I mean, it's, it's not a, it's not a free uh, friendship. It, it costs, but there is definitely value in what they do. So get to know the uh, Hernando County Association um, and that fabulous team there. Um, the next thing, and it is, <laughs> I told you when I told you, uh, yes, I do this. I said, I'm, I'm going to watch my mouth, but I'm going to be honest. Learn, learn your contracts, understand your contracts, like read them every single night for as long as it takes so that you can recite every single thing, know your dates, know your inspection periods, know, you know, all of those things. This is the most, <laughs> uh, like most difficult thing that we deal with on the other end. If you're the listing agent and you get an offer, like just, if you don't know how to do it, find somebody who does, or listen, if you're, if you're writing an offer on one of my properties or one of my agent properties and you're new and you don't know what you're doing, ask, ask yep. us, we'll, we'll walk you through it. Like yep. I much rather do that than, you know, have, and that was what, something that century 21 uh, did. It was very important to them. You know, they, um, we had classes, contract classes. She taught them religiously and you had no excuse. And I, you know, I did the same thing with, with my agents as, you know, um, you better be able to recite the whole thing, you know, when you need to, because you're going to need to, you're going to need to. And listen, in an environment where you're getting 10, 15 offers and your highest and best, and that contract comes and it's written like you're in elementary school and you don't know what you're doing. You don't have the right addendums. You've got far bar with crisp. You've got, you know, all this stuff. That's how the transaction's going to go for us aged agents, we're going to look at that and go, from the get -go, they're lost. So uh, learn your contracts. Um, this probably to me is something that I didn't do up front. And most don't because you're scrapping, like you're just trying to grab at any check you can get. You need to define your customer, define your customer base, your ideal customer. Um, and then there is a ton of things that go after that, uh, such as um, where are they? What do they do? Um, who are they? Uh, I always tell my 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 agents, friends, other people. You know, the customers going into the transaction look like you. They look like you. They usually enjoy the same things you do. They're usually in the same age bracket. You'll find them in the same. You know, if you have kids and they're playing t-ball and you're at the t-ball field, well, you know, your your customers look like that. And then if you go say 20, 30 years down the road, I'm, I'm 42. So, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, there's a, an exit strategy, right? But they're still look like me. They'll look like me when I'm 20, they're going to be selling their land. They're going to be selling their ranches. They're going to be transitioning. So identify them um, early up front, and then find where they are. You know, if, um, if you're like me and you have a passion for agricultural and, and ranches and land and waterfront properties, they're probably not going to be playing, uh, you know, pickleball in, um, in, in high point. So, uh, you know, find out where they are and, and, and get to them. You know, for me, it's, they're at the horse shows, they're at, you know, the 4-H meetings, they're at the, um, Hernando County Cattle Women's Association. Um, they're, uh, at the FFA fair. Um, they're, 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 you know, they're very easy to find, but you have to narrow that down. And I didn't like I scrapped like, OK, I'll take anything and everything, you know, yep. I will, I'll do what I got to do. And you do do that. You get into this kind of like freaked out survival mode. And, and I have to tell you, it doesn't go away. You know, that real estate cliff where you work so hard and then all of a sudden you have nothing like you still freak out over that even <laughs> five, 10 years into the business. But um, there is a sense of security that kind of comes with identifying the people at the, you know, the people you want to work with. And so I didn't do that up front. I probably around year five, year six, you know, I always loved the ranches and that kind of stuff, but I didn't really say, okay, this is what I want. And, and this is how I'm going to get it. And it's very specific. Gail Spada was a fabulous example. You know, she's like the, uh, in, in Southern, no, she's in Silverthorne, right? So she's in yep. Silverthorne and she would get a, one of her wonderful customers would call and be like, my sister's selling her ranch out in Brooksville. Like 
anybody else would have gone, heck yeah, let me go sell that ranch, you know, but Gail was always like, it's what you do. It's what you're best at. Let me make this referral because it's the right thing for the customer. And more importantly, because she needs to stay focused on what she was passionate about. And, um, you know, so if you can go and number one, find them, identify where they're at and, and write them out. What do they look like? You know, what do they, um, where do they shop at? What, you know, where are they at on the weekends? Where do they fish at? You know, are, are they in Arapica? Are they in Homosassa? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and then spend your time there and get involved. Um, and that involvement isn't fast. It's not fast. There's nothing about breaking into, you know, whether it's a charitable, uh, you know, a nonprofit organization, a club, you're not going to go in there and be at your first meeting and like everybody wanting to do business with you. It has to be genuine, Um, you know, and, and doing this kind of brought some things back to light to me. Like I've missed the last, I can't tell you how many cattle women's meetings because work like it, it just, it, I'm showing property or, you know, I'm with family or something like that, but I love those people and I should be there. I should be spending more time with them, supporting them, knowing what's going on in, in their world. So, um, yep. you know, that get involved, be patient. Um, I wrote this like 10 times down, be consistent. Uh, it's not my, uh, it's not my top, top of my personal strengths is consistency because I'm highly, uh, energetic and I can be like, Squirrel! you know, let's go here. Let's do that. Let's shoot this video. Yeah. <laughs> That's most of us. Right. <laughs> Um, so if you can, if you can create a routine and have consistency in your day, then, you know, you're going to just, they're going to know it. Like, here's an example, the people that sell stuff on Facebook, right? The, the one that sells shampoo and then candles and then wraps and then diet drinks. Right. Um, And then, and a lot of times those people sell it again, or then they change products and they sell something else and they sell something else. But um, there's this one girl in particular on my Facebook page that she's like six or seven years into the candle thing. And I and I actually I finally bought something off of her because I was like, she's identified what she wants and she's going after it. Like and so sometimes it does take a lot of time and um, she consistency every single day. She's on there with I I didn't need a damn candle, you know, but I was like, (laughs) I don't need another candle. But I'm like, look at her like. She's killing it. She doing what she, you know, needs to do to be consistent. So, yep. um, let's see. Set goals. Um, write them down. Uh, make them uh, achievable, attainable, and and time specific. You know, you can do big goals like, you know, hey, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars by the time my second year. But how are you going to get there? Is it measurable? How many calls do you have to make? How many, you know, appointments do you have to go on? You know, that kind of thing. Um, Again, I'm not personally fabulous at that. I'm not even really good at tracking numbers because um, my personal uh, success is vibed off of the people around me. Are my agents happy? Are they closing transactions? Um, Are they, you know... Um, are they smiling? Are they in the office? Are they coming to work? Do they love what they're doing? And the same thing. Like, I feel the same way about what I do. Are my customers happy? I don't care. You rank me wherever you want to rank me at, you know, I I care less. I'm, I'm, I'm in competition with nobody but myself. And, um, you know, that's so, but again, setting goals, watching them, you know, vision boards, we did vision boards, uh, a couple times a year. They're fun. It's a great way to get together, but, um, uh, the find a trusted mentor. Uh, a lot of times that's your broker and that's fabulous. That's probably who it should be. So you're getting, uh, yep. appropriate advice, right. Or a team lead, but you can, you know, I could go on and on about the people that supported me like, um, you know, uh, Sherry Oakland, Sharon Vance, like what, a, it, it's like one of the hugest losses in Brooksville losing her, but Sharon Vance, like, Um, You know, she was one of the first agents that said to me, it doesn't matter what that sign is over your head. We're on the same team. The goal is to make customers happy, sell the house, right? Make the buyers happy, sell them a house. Um, So uh, mentors, and they don't have to be in real estate. 
They can be at your church. They can be, you know, they can be your financial advisor, whatever it is, but find somebody um, and, and, and just, you know, maintain a relationship with them. So yeah. um, uh, maintaining and growing relationships. And I mean this in the reference of inside of real estate, right? Like we talked a little bit before we went live and um, we talked about the relationships we have with our agents. Um, you know, and it's so important. Like, it's so important to be able to, um, you know, pick up the phone and call, hug that other agent when you go to their open house, you know, it is yep. just, I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's the biggest thing. If you're a new agent, you should be going to every, every, every open house and introducing yourself to those people. Cause when that contract, when you write that contract on one of their properties and they don't know who the heck you are, you can think what you want. But, you know, we're, we want to have a pleasurable and a, a positive, you can write it, but if it ain't getting to the closing table, what does it matter? Right. So we need to know, yep. it does help to know who's behind that, you know, that, that contract. So grow your relationships, um, support each other, um, ask questions, all of those things. But, I, you know, um, there's some things that the, the older agents, the more experienced agents uh, do that. Uh, we, we shouldn't, all of a sudden we're so busy. We we're not there, you know, we're not at yep. the association. We're not at the open houses, that kind of thing. Like it was my recommitment to, I just went to Kim's the other day. It's right. It is right by the office, but you know, if I'm free, I want to go, I want to meet these people. Yep. I want to see the product, that kind of thing. Um, this is probably my biggest thing is, uh, don't compartmentalize your life. Like you can't. If you say, I want to sell million dollar products, I want to sell, you know, uh, I want to be in Southern Hills killing, you know, uh, two million dollar houses, or I want to be in Dade City crushing, you know, five million dollar ranches. Um, you can't, you can't be sitting at the bar and be drunk. I mean, let's just face you, how you live your, your daily life and how you carry yourself and how you act like those customers are all around you. They're everywhere. They're at the grocery store. You know what I'm saying? Everyone you look at as a future customer. If, if, if you like are going to try to convince somebody that you can handle the biggest transaction of their life, but you know, you're on Facebook trash talking other businesses, or you are, you know, selfies, you know, drunk, falling over the boat, whatever it is like, yep. it's not going to happen. It, I mean, I've had people even say to me, you've got, we, you're kind of snobby. I'm not, I don't think I'm snobby. You know, I think that I like, I want to, I want to work with a certain customer. And I, I recognize that that customer is, you know, they're going to live a certain way and they're going to have a certain set of, of morals and standards and that kind of thing. And I'm, you know, I'm, I, I can't convince myself that I can go off and be this person in my private life and this person in my business life. And it's not going to affect what I do. Correct. Right. Yep. So um, that is, that's a big one to me is not compartmentalizing, you know, who you are, or what you do, you know, I hear works work and I should be able to do whatever I want in my private life. Okay. Do it. But don't think it's not going to affect what you're, what you know, what you're doing. It's like the kids that are posting all their stuff on Facebook and not thinking that when I'm doing a job interview, that I'm not looking yep. on your social media first place I'm going, you know? Yep. So, um, it's, it's very important. Um, I love that. And, and just real quick, we got nine people on here. We'll definitely open up for some Q and a, I'd love for you guys to drop any questions that you have so far. And, you know, there was one thing I wanted to travel back on cause you touched on this, but I feel like this is a huge point where, um, you kind of said it without saying it. Yeah. How important do you think it is? when you're going to these networking groups, when you're, this isn't just networking, this is really anywhere, but how important do you think it is for your business to actually connect with people below the surface, like actually get to know somebody and what's what, like be vulnerable with them. How important has that been for your business? Yeah. Listen, it, I mean, there, I couldn't put a value on it. It is probably, you know, the, one of the most important things um, yeah. for, I mean, for so many reasons, because it, uh, it's trust. It's relationships and it's trust. And and if you can't build that with somebody, I mean, it's 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 not a success. 
right from the get go. And so, um, you know, I, I'll give it away. The first thing I say, and if I've ever, you know, sold you anything is like, they want a number. And I'm like, well, I don't have a number. You know why I don't have a number? Cause you haven't told me your goals yet. This is about you. It's not about me. It's not about, you know, my brokerage. It's not about what we put on social media. It's not about a YouTube page. It's about your goals. So tell me what your goals are. You want to sell it now? You know, do you not care? You want to leave it on the market for a little while because you want to get X number of dollars? What's going on with your family? So that's um, uh, that's just I've always that's said strong. That. Yeah, it, that's it's strong. Me about us. I mean, they are they're the center of the transaction always, always. Yep. So um, yeah, I think the personal side of things. I mean, I I just got back from Montana and I was with customers, like. I, I love, I, if I'm going to work with you, it's probably because I'm, I like you and I'm, I love you. Right. Like I got to the point in my career where I was like, Nope, you're not my people. I'm out. You know, like I don't have to take a listing and that's such a beautiful place to be because it, it's so intimate. Like you're just, you don't, it's, and it's a small town, right? Like <laughs> somebody's one bad thing about you and the whole, you know, ah, you know, but it, you, You'd rather have people say this is, you know, she was fabulous. She was fantastic. It was all about, you know, my goals, what I wanted to do. So, yes. What I love about what you're saying, too, that I, I think is a huge, like over the last two years, I feel like there was a huge misconception, especially for a lot of newer agents, right? Like where, I, and you probably had this, like if somebody wanted to sell their house, it almost didn't matter what the price was. Like it, like it, it, it was just out of line. Yeah. Like it was, it, you could you could price it too high, but it was very hard to do that. But now we're shifting towards a little bit of a, a different type of market here where if they don't have this trust and they don't have this belief in your process, you're going to run into expired land. You're going to be out some money, some time, yep. Yep. and ultimately nobody accomplished their goal. If you don't, the, what you said right there was so strong. Like I wrote down the time because that of, of the video, because what you said was so strong and such a huge nugget. That applies to everything. That applies to buyers, sellers, investors. Yep. Like they're all going to try to go at it that direction, which is great. They want your advice, but you have to go deeper before you can give it because your price. I mean, if you say a price before then, you're, you're obviously going to lean towards maximum convenience mm -hmm. is, is where you'll, mm -hmm. you'll start out with. Right. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's natural, but maybe that's not what their ultimate goal is. So. I thought that was incredible. I really did. Like that, that was a, a beautiful moment right there. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it's just, it, you're, you, you're right. So listen, th that's their investment you're selling, but they are your investment, right? That customer in front of you, that house, that is your investment. And you're either going to make a bad one or a good one. I had somebody tell me that the other day, I make good investments. And I was like, well, you're a, you know, you're a bad investment for me because you're $200,000. Oh, so, you know, you want substantially more than, than what it's worth, you know, and we're not going into the market where we can do that anymore. You know, it just is, a, it's going to, it's going to be different. And that kind of leads me to a segue of, of branding um, and, and knowing your brand. And I'm not talking about, you know, Keller Williams or Florida Cracker Properties or whatever it is. I'm talking about your brand standard as a realtor. Um, and I, you know, I aged myself a little bit, but I started when professional photos weren't a thing. You know, they really, everybody's still taking them with their camera or, you know, these flip phones, that kind of stuff. Um, and I just had decided right from the very beginning, I didn't care if it was $95,000 or $4 million. It was getting professional photos. It's actually in my agreement or my contract with the agents. That's yep. the standard in which we will move forward. Um, and so, um, you know, knowing how you're going to be like, I turn a go on MLS and I was in like a $4 million house with somebody's cell phone photos. Like I want to call those people and be like, what happened? What made you call this person? I mean, so I mean, I know that's brutal and I'm sorry if you do that, but I'm just saying, so that's your brand standard, right? That is what you do. That's your product that you put out. That is your investment. You just said, you're not really worth the investment of a professional photographer or videographer or, you know, putting it on on Google ads or building its own website or that kind of stuff. Cause you know what, I'm going to do the easiest thing possible that I can to make the most amount of money and it's going to sell. Yep. But it's not, it's still sitting there, you know? So um, your, your own personal brand is really important. 
and knowing what your brokerage, that's the other thing, knowing what your brokerage brand is too. Like I, I, you know, I see people putting stuff out and there's no mention of their brokerage and, you know, they're not using the logos and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, eh, that's, you got to be careful with all that stuff. So you need to know what your personal brand standard is and what your brokerage's brand standard is. I love that. And, you know, one thing that, that I, I tie in a lot and it comes up a lot is, you know, you're, you're hitting it right here. You are the brand, right? Like you, you are the brand. This is who you are. Everything that you do is not about the sign. It is not about your brokerage. It is not about those things. Like everything that you choose to do and how you represent yourself yep. is you. It is how everybody perceives you and you are the brand. And I think you hit it on the head, man. Like, what do you want to be remembered for? That's right. That's right. What's your legacy? Yeah. What is it? You know, so, yeah. um, I, uh, so run rest. I know I don't, I don't follow a lot of people. Um, but I know Brian Buffini, um, he's probably a little bit older to first know some of the new people, but he's got this run rest model. And I, you know, I finally figured out how to do it. Like when it's quiet, I take advantage of it. You know, I do the things that I need to do. Like at some points in my, in my, you know, the year as it goes by, I drive into my, my house and I'm like, damn, it looks like my house is in foreclosure. You know, the lawn's not done. You know, the bushes are four feet taller than, than the wraparound porch, that kind of thing. And I'm like, ah. so when it's quiet, I, I do the lawn and I, I'll go, you know, fishing with my husband and, you know, go on vacation, that kind of thing. You, it always picks back up and everybody can, it knows this, like, Hey, if you're, if you're slow, go on vacation. Right. Cause you'll get those phone calls. It's inevitable yep. when you think you're going to go yep. out of town. And then all of a sudden the phone's ringing, the leads are coming in, you know, that kind of stuff. And you're panicked because you're trying to pack, but you've got all these people you're trying to line up, but um, you know, but take, take the time. Um, and you don't have to, okay, here's the other thing. You don't have to tell the whole wide world when you're resting. You know, you don't have to say, sorry, can't come see you because we're at the beach or I'm taking a fishing day or, you know, and the other side of that is agent to agent. Don't do that either. Like, cause the first thing that comes to my mind is like, I just submitted an offer to you. I don't give a crap if you need a vacation or not. Like there's a deadline on there. Don't say that to me, you know? So, um, there are appointments, but there are appointments for you and, and you should take them and you should schedule them um, and, and put them in a time where you will not cancel on yourself. That's very important. So um, that gives you the ability to bring the energy back when you need to, but it also, um, it allows you to have a better work-life balance and that's important. You're able to, and the other thing you, that you're hitting there is that, man, this is a beautiful opportunity that you have, right? Like you can actually be on vacation and guess what? Like there's all sorts of technology out there. If if you, it's somebody who trusts you already, you can literally list your house completely remote. You can schedule the photography. You can schedule somebody to put the sign in. Like these are there. If you have a buyer, like you're leaving town, your buyer has to see this house. If y'all don't know what Shawami is, you need to learn what Shawami is because Shawami yeah. will save your life. Like, yeah. like it, it's literally perfect. And it's giving newer agents who are getting their foothold the opportunity to make a little money and ultimately save your butt because you can't get to the house that day. Um, yeah, I think you're hitting it right there, man. You're, you're, this is a lifestyle job. This is something yeah. where you are doing it no matter where you are, what you're doing, but that's a beautiful thing because you can be in Alaska and still help somebody here in Florida. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if you don't, you know, like, so I, I got a phone call not too long ago, lady wanted to list a ranch and she said she had interviewed other people, but she noticed on so-and-so's Facebook that they're all like, always on vacation. And I'm like, oh, yeah, never thought about that. Like, you know, again, can't compartmentalize. Like, you know, you, if you want to be the best, you want to look like you're the busiest. I, the, some of the best agents ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they're good. They do their stuff, but they look so damn busy on Facebook, but they see them at the coffee shop doing nothing. You know, like um, they just make themselves look busy because uh, uh, John Massaro, who owns uh, Beef O'Brady's here in Brooksville, activity breeds activity. You know, he's never been afraid to have, he owns Beef O'Brady's, he wants a restaurant right next to him. Because activity breeds activity. It's the same thing, you know, with what we do. If you if you look super busy, people are like, yep, yep, she's busy, she's working. And if, if, if you want to balance that on the other side of it, this is okay. a, like anything that this guy does, Dan Sullivan, oh, 
is all that. But this is literally like okay. as you scale up and you want to maintain your work life balance. The question isn't how am I going to get this done? It's who is missing from this that could help me get this done? Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you, you can actually continue to produce more and work less. So like you tied into that just now, because I, I feel like the busier, more successful agents really do this. Like you have pieces of your brokerage that were put there because you determined that these were uh, lower leverage activities that is better off. For, it, it would cost me less to hire somebody to do these yep. things than me doing Absolutely. it. And that's life, right? Like that's yeah. all of it. And what you I'm going to send you a picture after this video of what my bushes look like in front of our, yeah, our front porch. It's so true. I swear to God. I swear. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. I've, you know, we've got friends that like, I, they've never been inside my house. And listen, I'm going to put my husband on blast here. I have pink for Micah countertops, people. Like we own a construction company and he does the most amazing work. And my ingrained butcher block countertops have been in process for two years. So it, it everybody else's stuff always comes first and that's okay. That's the nature of the beast. So, and you were saying that I, and the next thing on my list was um, use the experts in their field. Right. Um, and, and that goes back to photography that goes back to marketing. One of the things I'm, I love about my brokerage is the fact that my agents just have to go sell. That's it. You just have to help somebody buy or you have to help somebody sell because there is a marketing manager. There's a there's a Google guru. There's a website. I mean, and they're all here like they're in the back right now. And that's what they do. Uh, one agent gets an idea and, um, you know, hey, this is kind of what I want. A couple hours later, it's in front of them and done. You know, the videos, that kind of stuff is just it. it is. It was kind of something that I thought just come in and sell. How can, how can you do all of the things? You can't be an expert in all of the things. You have to have the people that are experts in what they do around you all the time. And you were, you know, you were just alluding to that. And, um, I, you know, it costs us a little bit extra money and it's a commitment, but you know, everything that goes out on social media should look like somebody with a degree in that industry did it. And they did. So, um, and, and there's other ways, like, listen, you're new, you may not be able to afford uh, a full-time marketing manager, but there's Fiverr and a couple other yep. um, things that you can find online and you literally put your idea in there, you set a budget and somebody makes it for you, you know? So exactly. even if you can't be the most, you know, have all of those people, you can look them up like you have all those people still. So um, that's, that's an important thing that I learned when I, when I first started, and I got a little bit of money under my belt. I bought the drone. I bought the editing stuff. I did all this stuff. And I, it didn't matter. Like I had the great idea. Like I'm, I can storyboard it, but to make it look like I wanted to look, I still can't do it. You know? So I just said, okay, yep. forget it. Let me, let me find the person yep. that's best at that and use them. So. I, I think that's key. That's key for growth. And um, I just want to give a, like, we still have, I think five people on here. If anybody has any questions, that's like the most fun part about this, like yeah. like the engaging of going Absolutely. back and forth. So I'd love it if anybody has any any questions, comments, you know, how did Erica do? Like, I would I'd love to jump this in there because there's tons of value. that. And thank you, like yeah. tons of value. I've got three pages of notes in front of me and I love that you jumped on and you did this. Um, what do you think, uh, you know, what just while we have a second, people are dropping that you know, what, what are your plans here for the shift? Like what were, what were a couple of, of mindset changes or thought changes that are starting to, to turn the wheels right now for what, how you're going to pivot? Yeah. So I, um, honestly, I don't think there is for us, it's, it's, it's day to day. Ready. Like we're yeah. already doing it. You're, we're not going to go out and overprice. I got to deal with the appraiser and I have to deal with your expectations and I have to deal with the fact that it doesn't appraise. We're not going to do that. Right. Um, I think, right? It's media. It's, it's social media. It's talk, right? If it goes in your eyes and it sits in your brain, it's what you're going to believe. We don't, we just don't listen to any of that crap. You know, yep. um, the market's going to be what it's going to be. People are always going to have to sell their homes. And if you are consistent in what you do and who you are, it, you might, you know, you might slow down a little bit. You might not get 20 offers the first day the property is on the market, but um, you know, it, it's still, I mean, this is still one of the most amazing places to live in the United States, you know, like, it really is. I mean, um, come here. Uh, the, I haven't seen personally a lot of like the people coming down from 
up north or California, that kind of stuff. But I, I have met some amazing people from St. Pete and Sarasota yep. and South Tampa. Like they want our lifestyle. And come on, you know, let's do it. Um, they're not trying to buy a 10 acre ranch and split it up into, you know, one acres and, and put a subdivision there. They want to embrace that lifestyle. Um, so, yep. yeah, I mean, things are going to happen. You know, the people with cash all of a sudden are, are that used it, use lending because they were at 2%. They're going to, they're going to, you know, now we're at five, five and a half. Hey, let me use my own money because the rates are higher. I mean, there's, I, I don't think you have to freak out. I don't think you have to be worried. I mean, there is, as a human being, the lack of affordable housing hurts my heart. You know, um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I. I look at my daughter who's 20, she graduates in May, you know, she's got to make 90 to a hundred thousand dollars her first year out of, out of school to be able to afford a house, car insurance, go to the grocery store, have any kind of personal life, that kind of thing. That, that is probably what I kind of um, personally struggle with the most is, especially we just sold a, a house, my husband and I, we resurrected a hundred and, you know, 10 year old home, 102 year old home. And, I hosted the open houses, which I probably shouldn't have done um, because people are just, it's so sad. Like this is, we're put 20 offers in on things and you know, we, we, we just, we just want a place for our family to go. We don't want to pay $4,000 in rent. We, you know, everybody deserves to own a home. So um, I think that's, I don't mind seeing some correction for that purpose. You know, hundred percent. everyone deserves to own a home. They, it is, it's like one of the, you know, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and own a home, you know, make the biggest investment that you possibly can um, for your long-term wealth, you know, for your personal wealth, um, own a home. So when, when, <laughs> when we're looking at houses that I sold five, six, seven years ago for 17,000 and they're going for 140, like, gosh, that's hard. That's hard. But yep. Awesome, man. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. It looks like we don't have anybody dropping on the comments. And, uh, you know, this is a blessing. I really appreciate you taking all this time. Mm -hmm. And anything that you want to leave everybody else off on? Like any, any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, um, I think as a new agent, don't compare yourself to everyone else. Like, listen, that's that's you can't do that. I'm so different than, than, you know, the next person. Um, and my customers are different. My work ethic is different. Um, you, you, you are going to be the best version of you and that's what your, your goal should be. I have people that are like, um, somebody will ask me a friend and she goes, now, man, I like turned you off on social media a long time ago. Cause I get, I can't watch that. It makes me kind of jealous when you list those houses. And I'm thinking, gosh, I don't, you know, I, number one, I don't want anybody to, to feel like that, but do you, you know, like that, that's what I do. And, and we should all um, be positive for each other's success. You know, we should all be, you know, listen, every one of these agents that works for me knows they better be better than me. You know, I want them better than me. I want them to sell more than me. I want them to grow bigger than me. You know, I, that it, if you're not lifting them up, you're pushing them down. And that goes for anybody in your life. If you are not lifting them up, you are pushing them down. And um, so just don't, don't, uh, don't do that. Just, I still do it. You know, like I still look and I go, what the hell did they do to get that listing? But it's yep. still like, you know what? Good for them. Cause they obviously did something Celebrate right. Them. Celebrate them. Yep. Celebrate them, you know? Um, and be, be careful with, you know, your, your social media and stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, as a new agent, just be, don't go on and complain about the restaurant, you know, don't go on and complain about the service wherever you went. Like it just, it doesn't, it just doesn't look good, you know, be a professional and all that you do. Um, and that might be an unpopular opinion, but what happened to picking the phone up and calling the manager and telling them that the pizza sucked? Why do you got to put them on blast yeah. on, you know, on Facebook? So, um, that's, I think that's kind of my, my final words of wisdom. Um, and uh, 
here's my offer. Listen, my, you can put my cell phone number up, whatever you want to do. If, if somebody wants to call and ask more specific questions or ask anything about, you know, that they didn't want to put online or um, ask for help or advice, that kind of thing, do it. Uh, I mean, the, it actually brings me joy seeing other people win and grow and succeed. So. Absolutely. And, um, it's a good time. You will see her personally. I, I just want to drop this right here. Like, um, let me look it up. Do you, do you know how they find you on TikTok without me looking it up? Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I think it's Erica FCP, Erica Sumner FCP. Hang on. I'm going on it. Where am I? Oh, it's FLA cracker, Erica. FLA cracker, Erica. Uh huh. Perfect. FLA Cracker Properties. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're on all platforms. Uh -oh. Erica. Oh, I mean, it looks so like when you look at that handle, like it's like, er, er, like because it's, if you look at the middle of it there, it's FLA Cracker -er Ica. And I'm like, what am I, what did I just write? And I'm like, no, it's Cracker Erica. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, again, thank you. Thank you for taking your time. Your time is valuable. And uh, yeah, I think people are going to get a lot of value out of this. And I appreciate you jumping on. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thanks for doing this, too. I think that's awesome. I mean, it, for you to, you know, give of your time and talents and, and energy and effort. And we talked about that. Like, you know, um, if somebody's pouring themselves into you, be grateful. You know, if they're sharing their their time and, and we, you know, you're, you're either taken away from, from their workday, their family, their pocketbook, you know, just understand that that's a blessing and show some gratitude towards it. So thank you um, for doing this. And thank you for um, not caring what sign is over people's head and really trying to, to, um, you know, bring positivity to the industry. We love that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Talk Have soon. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thank you guys.